all the chemicals that we have unleashed are moving around the world. Um, they're, 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 they're in the air and in, in, in water, particularly. You know, so when you have a mine, you know, and it digs up all that rock and that soil and things like to get at the ore, basically, that, that, a lot of that ends up in the river. And the river ends up cloudy and turgid and polluted and uh, the fish die um, and the water is undrinkable and acidic runoff, um, you know, starts to flow out of the mine dumps, the dumps of spoils and, and uh, things that are left over after the mine. I mean, there's a, there's a mine in California um, which basically is still going to be emitting acid runoff for 3,000 years. You know, after the mine closed, it closed in the 1960s, but it's it's still pouring out poison. So, so you know, these are the sort of things that we've unleashed, which we don't really understand. Um, we don't understand that a lot of the corals, you know, that, that are dying in Australia, they're dying because the cattle grazing the inland loosed the topsoil. Um, the, the inland was overgrazed. The topsoil got into the rivers, came flushing down with each large rain every season. And then the sediment went out onto the reef and it buried the corals uh, and the corals died, basically. So all the inshore corals in Australia are pretty well gone um, now uh, because of sedimentary runoff, because of soil erosion, because of what you saw in the Dust Bowl in the 1930s. Now, these, this humans just hammering, hammering the ground and, and, and unle you know, mobilising all that dirt. It's happening all over Africa at the moment. It's terrifying. Um, the amount of erosion that's taking place, especially especially as we introduce, or as Bill Gates introduces, modern American-style agriculture to Africa. It's going to multiply the amount of uh, uh, soil erosion and, and, and damage to water um, and wildlife and things like that in Africa. So, you know, poor old Africa is going to go the same way. Um, these systems are not sustainable. You know, there were a short-term stopgap solution to, to a, a problem, but we have to go to a sustainable food system from now on. So poisoning a planet was really about the mobility of these chemicals, that once you produce something, it doesn't just sit still. When you produce some mercury, when you burn coal to generate your electricity, the coal gases go up the chimney, but they contain mercury. Now they come down in the middle of the ocean and the swordfish that you get to eat, you know, contains high levels of mercury, which has been bioconcentrated up the food chain in the ocean. The, the um, polar bears in the Arctic have increasingly high levels of mercury caused by coal burning for power generation in Western society and, and in China and, and things like that. So, you know, the, the, the mercury is highly mobile. It can go up into the atmosphere. It can flow through these food chains uh, and it can concentrate, particularly in human beings. And that is why when ladies get pregnant nowadays, their doctor says to them, don't eat fish because it contains too much mercury because the fish bioconcentrate the mercury that we release. So that mercury can be released by burning coal. It can be released by mining gold. Uh, it can be released by a host of, of it used to be released from our fillings <laughs> in our teeth, um, you know, from a whole lot of processes, basically. Toxic mercury is released into the environment and it comes back to us in the food chain. But that is, that in a, in a, in a snapshot is what, what we're going I call this the anthropogenic chemical circulation because it is an entire process. It, it's bigger than, you know, the, the ocean currents. It's a worldwide current in which toxins are being dis distributed around the planet. And, you know, we've, we've got to start getting a scientific handle on it. At the moment, we have no scientific handle on it, basically. We, we know little bits of it. Uh, our knowledge of, of, of the, uh, the global chemical circulation is back where our understanding of climate change was in the 1960s. And we need to advance that very rapidly. Very frightening indeed on um, this, uh, yeah. Um, also, uh, we have one person now, oh, Benny. Benny, what would you like you to ask a question for Julian Cribb? Uh, thank you, uh, great presentation. Um, what is the potential of biomass and especially hemp biomass to replace or to be used for fuels? And does that really 
uh, reduce the amount of carbon or is it just a different type of carbon that's ultimately burned? Okay, well, any, any kind of biomass if burned is carbon neutral uh, if you're using it for fuel because the carbon you release when, when you release, when you burn it, uh, is, is absorbed by the growing of the plant. Whatever, whatever the plant happens to be, it doesn't happen to be, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, hemp or, or, or any other high yield or high mass crop. Um, the problem is that if you try to produce your fuel agriculturally, you also destroy topsoil. You, inevitably, you, you, you unleash topsoil, you use water that you would use for some other purpose. And we know that places like California, China and India are running out of water. Um, you know, we, we can't. So, so agricultural systems for producing food, uh, fuel, sorry, are not terribly sensible any longer. They used to be. And, and there are still certain agricultural wastes like, uh, you know, bagasse from sugarcane, which can be used to heat the process that is used to refine sugar. Um, you know, that, 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 that's a sensible use of an agricultural waste. But uh, by and large, ploughing up good country, which, which ought to be returned to nature uh, in order to, to, to drive motor cars is, is a nutty idea. Um, and long, especially, we now know we can drive our cars on the sun uh, or on the wind, you know, uh, and with, with big batteries and, and, you know, Elon Musk and co. You know, we, we, we're moving over to electric vehicles at a phenomenal rate around the world. And I would think that by the 20, by 2030 anyway, you know, there'll be enormous mobility, electrification of the transport system. So you won't really need liquid fuels all that much. Uh, some people are promoting green hydrogen as an alternative transport fuel for say big trucks and trains uh, and so forth. But you know, if you, if you like farming alternatives, I'll tell you one that, that still is looking very promising and that's algae farming. You know, you, you can grow algae almost anywhere you don't want them. You know, that, 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 that slimy green stuff in your, in your dam or your pond or your river. Um, but, but basically you can extract oil from almost any kind of algae. And there's been a lot of really good science done on that in the United States and elsewhere. Uh, so, I mean, you could literally squeeze the algae, extract the oil and whack it into your, into your four wheel drive and drive away. So, um, it's, uh, you know, uh, algae is, is potentially a useful source of transport fuels uh, if you need one. Thank you for that, Benny, for that question. Um, also, uh, Julian, can you explain to our audience uh, your chapter in your book um, called Six Society? Yeah, well, that's basically the, this phenomenal increase in, in a whole lot of diseases that were almost unknown when I was growing up in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, so we're talking particularly brain diseases in, 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 or developmental diseases in young children. Um, you know, the, the, the worldwide surge in autism and ADHD um, and, and a whole lot of other uh, diseases that are related to that, um, particularly diseases affecting uh, gender, sexuality and reproductive potential the loss of fertility in both males and females is a worldwide phenomenon now. And it all coincides with this avalanche of chemicals that have been unleashed on us since the mid 1970s. But you know, there's, there's a statistic that is even more alarming. And that is that according to seven scientific studies that I've seen so far, the human IQ, human intelligence is now declining at a rate of about three points per decade, okay? So we're becoming dumber and dumber and dumber as we go along. And the only possible explanation for this is the global flood of nerve poisons, neurotoxins that is being unleashed by global chemistry. Um, the, the brain damage is being done in the womb and in early childhood, which is when the brain develops. I mean, the, the, the brain absorbs almost everything you put into it. Which is, which is why we, we, we like to smoke weed and, and, and drink alcohol and things like that, because we get a high straight away. Uh, that's why people take drugs. Um, but to be honest with you, you know, if you do that to a three-year-old or a four-year-old, you damage their intelligence for life. And that's what we're doing. So the human IQ has actually decreased. Now get this, it's decreased 13 points since 1975. 
according to these studies. That means humans have gone from being 100 points average down to 87 points. If you look in the average jail, the IQ is about 85. So we've reduced the human intelligence to very nearly that of a jail inmate, a typical jail inmate. And, you know, that's, uh, this is a disaster. It's a disaster for democracy. It means that people no longer have the mental capacity to understand the issues that they are being asked to vote upon. And I, we've seen that in elections in the United States, Australia, Britain, and elsewhere. People just don't get what's, what it's about any longer. They're, they're driven by these fantasy beliefs um, and fictions and you know, all sorts of imagination. They're driven by, by misinformation, disinformation, a whole lot of lies and bullshit. They don't have the intellectual equipment any longer to tell the tr difference between truth and fiction. So, so consequently, they're voting that way as well. Um, and you can't have a democracy if people are brain damaged. And unfortunately, we're brain damaging people at this phenomenal rate. What is causing it precisely? It's, it's not one thing or another. It's the whole mess of things. It's air pollution. It's what's coming out of your sofa. It's what's coming out of the plastic in your environment. It's what's coming out of the, the dashboard of your, of your motor car. You know, so all of these things, you're inhaling them every moment. They're going into your blood. They're going into your brain. Um, you know, I've mentioned uh, the, how a baby now, you know, the first poo it takes when it comes out of its mother's womb is full of plastic because tiny plastic, i.e. petroleum particles, have, have entered its mother's bloodstream, you know, during, during her pregnancy, and that child is already contaminated. It's already being brain damaged by the chemicals carried by those plastic particles, microparticles. And, and we're doing more and more of it. So we're doing more, nanotechnology is the release of micro scale particles. And nobody has any idea, any idea at all what the gross health effects of this are going to be. But we're, we're licensing, not even licensing, we're releasing uh, new nano products, you know, almost every week. Uh, sporting equipment, socks, you name it, nano socks. There's all these, these this techno babble about how wonderful nano is and yet nano gets can get anywhere in your body and it can have a toxic effect anywhere in your body your brain your liver your pancreas your kidneys you know it can get there and nobody is doing a thing to stop it there is no regulation to prevent nanotechnology from creating a whole rank of new diseases so we're going to see a, a whole bunch of new diseases that have never been seen before in fact we're already seeing them and doctors are getting frustrated because a patient walks in saying, doctor, I don't feel good. You know, uh, um, I've got this symptom. I've got headaches and, and blurred vision and, and, and what have you and night sweats and things like that. The doctor says, oh, it's all in your mind. So I'll give you some psychotherapeutic drugs. So, so this patient who is poisoned by the, the outpourings of the petrochemical industry is then given a product from the petrochemical industry to treat the disease. You know, how sick is that? Mm -hmm.